Hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, we might almost ha squeeze down, squeeze down, find. All right, so this is, let's see how we do. Not everybody was here for the Easter egg hunt. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, so let's see. Alexa and Eliana and Michael and you two sweethearts are not here for the, what are your names? Um, Helen, Helen and Gregory. Gregory. Good to meet you. And Ben and James and S comes before V, Scarlet and Violet. Right? <laughs> and my name is it? And my name is? Pastor Robin. Yes, thank you, Alexa. And here's Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a story. When I was little, can you imagine me little? All right, picture really, really blonde hair, okay? Big eyes and these big chubby cheeks. And I hated getting in trouble. Who likes getting in trouble? You like getting in trouble, really? Really? So, do you know what I would do to try to not get in trouble? I would lie. I would lie. I would fib so that, and hopefully, you know, I wouldn't get found out. And this one time, my, well, my mother had said to me, Robin, if I catch you in another lie, I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. Anybody ever have that happen to them? Okay, and then you had to wash your hands. Okay, so can I tell you the story of, of and I, th I must have been three or four, and I still remember this. I had asked my mom to make me a fried, <laughs> you're going to love this, older folks, a fried bologna sandwich. Do they make those anymore? Does anybody, anyway, a fried bologna sandwich. And then, and she told me, eat it all. Did you ever get that? Eat it all. And then I wasn't that hungry, and I didn't want to eat it all. So, being really clever, I opened the garbage can, and I thought I hid it well. I thought I had taken off the top layer and hidden the bologna underneath it so she couldn't see it. But guess what? She found it. And guess what? I had my mouth washed out with soap. And I can still remember, I can still, st I, I can still, it was like little ladder right in front of the sink. And, and I think every kid does this who had this done. You open your mouth and you put the soap in and then you pull it out and you go and you look at them and they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you have to put your tongue on it, right? <sighs> oh, it's awful. It's awful. And then it, it's like sticks to your tongue. So then you have to like, I mean, I mean just to try to get out of your mouth, right? Never forgotten it. Never forgotten it. And I was three or four. That was a long time ago. You have to drink water and then try, and then, you know, just, you don't want to swallow it, though, because then it tastes like soapy water, and it's gross. Anyway, so I remember later, and I was probably, I don't know how much later, it took years, though, that I re did something, and it thought to me, and I thought to myself, maybe if I tell her instead of waiting for her to find it it might go better for me right so I had was dusting something and I had lifted this heavy lamp with one hand and it was too heavy and it fell in the corner scratched the table and I looked at it I'm like oh no and then I thought if she finds it she'll be more upset with me than if I go and tell her I hope right so I went to her, to my mom, and I said, Mom, just so you know, when I was dusting, I lifted the lamp, it was too heavy, and I scratched the table, I'm really sorry, and waited. And what do you think she said? She said, naughty, naughty. She said, no, she didn't say naughty, naughty. Oh. She said, <laughs> she said, thank you for telling me. Be more careful next time. <gasps> I had figured out the key. <laughs> Own up to it right? Let them know. And it would never went as badly as when I lied about it and got and found out, right? 
Today we celebrate Easter. Today we celebrate forgiveness, among other things. With God, we don't have, God knows everything. God knows everything that we've done, all that we think, right? But we don't have to be afraid of God. God says, you know what God says to us when we make mistakes? It's okay. It's okay. Try, be, you know, be more careful next time. Really? You're forgiven. I love you. There's nothing that we can do. There is nothing that we can do that God will stop loving us. And you know, sometimes people are afraid, but we don't have to be. We don't have to be with God because Jesus taught us that God loves us no matter what. Will you fold your hands with me? Close your eyes. Bow your heads. I'm going to say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen word. And live in our hearts by your Holy Spirit so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Our unison reading is Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. Please join me. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. May my soul rise to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to creator, redeemer, and sustainer as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. I know... I have told you this story before. You may not have been here, but two Easter's ago, when COVID emerged, and pastors know this, that, that COVID hit right after Ash Wednesday. And I went into full cheerleader mode. We got this, right? And every week, you know, we were online doing worship. And for Easter Sunday, I wanted to do something special. And so the day before, I had checked the weather report, the day before, I went out to film the sunrise. And I checked to find out what time this, the sunrise is. And I come to find out there's a thing called first light. That's that first ribbon of sun. And I always thought that was sunrise, but apparently not. And to get to film the sunrise, you have to get out before first light. While it is still dark, and that's in our scripture passage, while it was still dark, the women went to the tomb, right? And so I, because I live in a pretty little lake community and surrounded by hills, and because of COVID, I was walking my dog every day and going down all the little side streets, taking different paths every day because we had the time. And I wanted to explore. And there, there's this one gorgeous view. There used to be a house there. There is no longer a house. There's got to be a story there. But they left us this gorgeous view. And so that I, that's where I decided I would film it. And so before First Life, bundled up, I go, I go to that spot. And your phone is also a compass, if you didn't know. And I opened that. And I figured out which way is east. And I put my phone to record. I... Uh, propped it up on a rock, and then I sat. And then, what do you do when you're bored? You take out your phone. But my phone was being used. 
So I thought, well, you know, good pastorly thing to do. Maybe I should pray. And I considered the question, how do I need salvation in my life? A few weeks ago, I said in a sermon that, you know, there are, you know, we will try to exhaust every possibility before turning to Jesus. And there was more than one, "Mm mm-hmm, from the congregation. I thought, yeah, they know. We know. Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? Why do you look for life through things that cannot give you life? As I sat there, I was beating myself up a little bit because I thought, how many times have I prayed this? And I feel stuck. And, you know, I'm saying these things to God. I'm praying this, you know, God knows, I know, you know. know, And is anything ever going to be anything different? And then the world woke up. And that first ribbon of sun and the birds start crying out to each other. (laughs) And then the bugs start buzzing. And then the light, and it changes everything. And you're sitting in the dark, and suddenly you can see, and then it changes and becomes more precise and clear. It was magical. And something inside my soul got unstuck. It does not have to be as it has always been your first 50 years, but hey, I got another 50 years, right? And new life, new beginnings, and at Easter. It was because of COVID that I was out there. It was because I wanted to give hope to other people, and I found hope myself. God met me in the garden the way that God met Mary in the garden. Why are you weeping? Because I don't have hope. And hope was born. The angels meet us in the Gospel of Luke as we peer into the empty tomb. Why do you look for the living among the dead? What a great question. Where are you seeking life where life cannot be found? In the bottle? In a store with a credit card? Through your relationships? Through work? The peace that passes understanding comes from knowing the living God. That you are forgiven. Again, there's nothing that you can have done or not done or had done to you that can stop God from loving you. The peace that passes understanding comes from knowing that you're loved. The world is never going to tell you that you're okay. But God created you to be unique to, and exactly as you are and to use your gifts and discover them and when you live into them to know incredible joy. As you bless the world, so you are blessed. The peace that passes understanding comes from knowing that you are free, that the chains of sin have been broken. There is hope, there is new life, there is freedom. Jesus makes a way. And the peace that passes understanding comes from the knowledge that that we no longer need to fear death. And if we're being really honest, we still cling to that a little bit, but we don't need to fear There is much more that we could say about God's grace. You don't earn it. It's a gift that I would encourage you to open each and every day, daily for the rest of your life. We are all works in progress. (laughs) You know, God may have broken the chains of sin, but we'll find some rope to tie ourselves up to some other things, right? But God can break those too. There is hope in the living God. We worship the living God. The Hebrews passage that we just read comes at the culmination of stories of people who have lived their lives in faith without ever seeing what they've worked for come to fruition. Anything that is worth giving your life to will never be accomplished in a lifetime. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses 
to testify to that truth. The loved ones who have gone on before us are now our cheering section. And we get that great honor when we go to be with Jesus for the generations to come who we pray will find hope through faith in Jesus Christ. As part of our service this morning, I thought we could rededicate ourselves to our faith and the journey that we're on by asking the traditional questions of baptism, and we ask these questions at confirmation or when someone joins the church. This day, God shouts a huge yes to humanity. And by reaffirming our faith, we can shout a great big yes right back to commit ourselves or recommit ourselves to our life and faith. And it really does make all the difference in the world. You get out of bed in the morning knowing that anything and everything can happen, but that anything and everything is possible with God. Even resurrection in your life. I encourage you, don't feel pressured. I'm going to go through the, through the questions. Don't feel pressured to, to say these if, if you're not there. Uh, but so, you know, and nobody's videotaping you. It's not going to be on TikTok tomorrow that, you know, whether, whether or not you participated or not. But I hear these questions. The first is recognizing that, that we have power to make choices for ourselves, that we are not chained. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you, and don't answer these now, we're going to do this later, I'm just going over through the questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? God has given us the power to turn from the ways of sin. Do we trust God? It's a process, right? It's not, you know, it's not everything doesn't go away like this, but God, as we grow in faith, takes things from us, and we get freer and freer and freer. And for folks who have been on the journey, you know, you, the chain comes and done, and then you tie yourself up again, and then you untie yourself, and that, that's how it is. But we believe that there is power in faith in God. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you know, do you know that God loves you through and through? It's grace. It's a gift. You are loved no matter what. Do you put your faith in him? And then finally, will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? A disciple means a student. It means a follower. It means we're on the journey together. And I've been boiling it down lately that, you know, what we're called to do, it's not rocket science. It's that we are to shower God's love on the world in Jesus' name. Do you want to be part of that? If so, you're going to answer, I will with God's help. And ain't that the truth? Let us commit ourselves with joy to the journey this day. It's not only hope for ourselves. It's hope for the whole world. In Jesus' name, amen.